I think before we had the excuse that we didn't know we were harming our planet, right? Streaming 30 minutes of high definition content on Netflix can result in greenhouse gas emissions equivalent to driving almost four miles, as reported by the French think tank, The Shift Project. That's quite unsettling. We can eventually even eliminate that carbon budget if we're really good at it. At Globant, we help companies around the world reinvent themselves and find their way forward through digital and cognitive transformation. We help them create a way forward. Welcome to Unscripted Tech, a Globant original podcast about the trends that are changing how the technology game is played and about what we do with them. My name is Rebecca Reed, and I'm a digital marketing strategist at Globin. Over the next six episodes, we'll be talking about technology trends that are changing the game for companies across all industries. Each episode will feature conversations with Globers from around the world, disruptors, trailblazers, and igniters that will channel innovation and creativity to provide a better understanding of what comes next with each of these tech trends. Let's dive in. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the footprint that technology leaves. Not every tech advance is a sustainable one, and the time has come to think not only about the future, but about how technology can be sustainable in the present. How are future technologies shaping the Earth's ecosystem? Is tech pushing the boundaries of what should and shouldn't be done regarding our planet? Yes, definitely technology is pushing the boundaries um, in terms also of what we can advance in respect to the planet and what we should disregard in respect to the planet. Elena Moratini is the head of the Sustainable Business Studio at Globant. I think before we had the excuse that we didn't know we were harming our planet, right? We didn't have the technology to know what we were doing <laughs> with our first industrialization, for example. But now we have all the technology available to us and a viable and feasible technology to even assess the harm that we're doing with our planet and also use technology to get better at it. Nelly Ortiz is a senior director in the Business Hacking Studio, which means she is dedicated to hacking the gap between business and technology. So there's no excuse, it's available to us. And you know, as Elena was saying, it's accessible to us and it will actually help us to scale on a level that we never did before. So technology should always be seen now in what the World Economic Forum is calling the fourth industrial revolution as a key and a foundation to make our planet a stakeholder for every decision that we make in our business and that's how we actually use technology to you know, have a better planet and ecosystem for everyone around us. Well, now that you say that, Nelly, it actually it, it, it's even more clear that there is a series of parameters that we can measure through technology. And uh, one of them, above all, is the CO2 content of our atmosphere. And that is currently being done at the Hawaii island. There is an observatory on the Mauna Loa that through mass spectrometry continuously records CO2 concentration in the atmosphere in parts per million since I can't remember if it's 1950 or 1958. Today, it pertains to the Scripps Oceanographic Institute. And so indeed, as Nelly was saying, if we didn't have that mass spectrometry technology, we wouldn't be able to take that measurement and know exactly where do we stand breathing within the one atmosphere under which we breathe. So definitely, yes, the boundaries and many of the boundaries of what should and shouldn't be done in this planet come through uh, awareness of technological measurements that we can take and technology advancement. I love that example because, you know, we would, we just, Elena and I work in different studios, what we call studios in Globent. And if you know anything about Globent, we're organized by different studios that are kind of deep pocket of expertise and we work together to solve problems. Um, and, um, and this is, you know, in business hacking, we're looking at what are those KPIs that we want to affect uh, an impact in a way that we know that we're doing something, we're making a change and a delta in someone's business. 
And we always see it through the eyes of Elena, which is sustainability. So we need to take into consideration those sustainability KPIs from the beginning so we understand how we guide every decision that our clients want to achieve with the lens of our planet. Because we know that that's also a win-win for everyone, right? If we actually include the planet in our decisions. And also going back to this Mauna Loa Observatory that is in such a beautiful place at the Hawaiian, that is in such a beautiful a trip as soon as possible. Um, I think it is worth mentioning that those numbers of CO2 are not only recorded continuously, but published continuously. So they give as a result what it's called the Keeling Curve. And you can go on Twitter and check the Keeling Curve every day. The Keeling Curve measurements of uh, Uh, parts per million of concentrations of CO2 in our atmosphere. And possibly that is a, a good way to stay aware of what is happening to the quality of the air we're breathing. So maybe that's good that we, we check that tweet and, uh, and we consider those numbers just to stay aware that we, we check that tweet. Technology help reduce CO2 emissions or build strategies to mitigate the pollution from tech-related industries. I think we really did a good job in... Uh, trying to use mapping tools from technology indeed to track our carbon budget carbon budget meaning basic, basically our emissions and as we said for the killing curve we really need to stay aware of those numbers so we have a platform which is called navigate that is actually refurbished in terms of a, a technological platform because it wasn't meant to be uh, used for tracking uh, Uh, carbon budgets, but we've refurbished it uh, in the team, within the team, and now we can use Navigate as a digital carbon twin. I love this expression. I think it's really, it's really catchy and cool. So basically through a platform called Navigate, what we do is that we can measure the budget of CO2 associated, or, or carbon, maybe more correct to say, associated to every step of a process. So whichever process, Nelly, you decide to map, may that be in an industry or in an, may that be in an in, there will always be a carbon footprint associated to it because unfortunately we do produce uh, carbon footprints with the majority of the actions we take. But now those actions can be mapped. So we can understand about any process what its final carbon budget will be. So carbon is just one of the things that we can measure But there's so many other things and costs and efficiencies and, you know, automations and possibilities that we can map with this tool. So, you know, when, when our, our clients come to us and, and, and they start talking about sustainability, a lot of them see this as a burden. It's like, oh, you know, I have to maybe invest more money to just figure out what I'm doing wrong. And then it's going to be more costly for me. No, actually, it's the opposite. To be actually more planet and sustainability prone, you're actually reducing your own costs as a company and you are assessing how you optimize your energy. How do you optimize your people? How do you optimize your resources? So then you're not just better for the planet, but you're better as a company and you are, you know, giving more return on investment to whatever you put in. Somehow we have a role, which is that of trying to make see these things as part of the business, because there is a lot of investment out there. So the money is already on the table. We just need to link people, profit and planet in the correct way. Basically, we think that there's not going to be any business without being a and planet in the correct. If you don't want to be a stranded business, you really should uh, start thinking about how you want to take this on board. And as I try to pass the message to different size of uh, clients and partners, it doesn't really matter how much money you will invest up front, meaning that, of course, the more the better, but it is important that you start acting on it. Think about actually building a movement in a company that has a foundation that could actually adapt and create change very, very fast and adapt to the change and the technologies and the trends in a way that others cannot do. And that's how we see technology also at Globant, is that we are thinking about architectures that are adaptable. We're thinking of business models that are agile. We're thinking about you know, 
how we work together in a way that we can make decisions faster and we can get there and in, in a way that we can always be competitive. And I think that's what we are really trying to build for, to be a sustainable business. You need to make changes, foundational changes, and think about the future in a way that you're going to last and last in the long term. What other ideas can help people and companies understand that they can really take action to solve environmental problems? One is definitely circular economy. Circular economy that, that we translated into spherical economy because we think that we need a third dimension added to it. But in general terms, circular economy is a new economic model that leaves behind the model of taking something, making something, and disposing something. So we're going beyond the take, make, dispose model, the linear model, and we embrace a circular regenerative economy where the source should always be renewable energy and where every material can be recycled or upcycled, which is a new concept that is quite relevant as well, because we usually think about recycled product that somehow... uh, um, a poorer version of the um, of the original one. While if we talk about upcycling, we know that we can transform them even in fashion objects. I mean, there is a big movement in in recycling and creating new new materials and crafts for the fashion industry itself. So, um, circular economy versus spherical economy is something that we need to start having in our language. And I will be I will just. Uh, sort of constrain my time. Climate roadmaps is another beautiful concept that we're also adopt, adopting in terms of services. It basically means accompanying companies in drawing their climate roadmap towards carbon neutrality at 2050. I have three that I want to mention, and I kind of mentioned them before, but I want everyone to remember them. So the first one is at Planet as a stakeholder as a stakeholder about you know anything that you do especially when you're trying to innovate about a new concept new technology uh, a new experience for your users if you put planet as a stakeholder imagine the possibilities it makes you think bigger it makes you think that your impact is not only in the small part of your company or industry but it's like how can you impact the planet and how are you making this even bigger Um, Green KPIs is a second one. I think when we talk about KPIs, a lot of my clients will go immediately to the typical ones, you know, profit, (laughs) give me money. It's great. That's a great KPI. We need to make money. But there's other more. There's more in customer experience because user needs to be in the center, as Elena said it. And there's some others that had to be attained to your values and what you want to impact, especially if you see Planet as a stakeholder. And a third one, would be sustainable architecture. As Globend, you know, we are com- we have a commitment to the world and we have started to transform all of our internal systems into what we call green or sustainable architecture, meaning everything that you called before, let's say legacy systems and how everything was used before, we're really transforming first to track our impact to the world and second to make it efficient and planet friendly. Great. So you talked about hacking. What does that mean in this context? And what is the call to action on sustainable business hacking? I love the word hacking because hacking really what it means is how do we use creative ways and efficient ways to solve a problem, right? There are so many ways to attack a problem or to really think of how we get to that solution, But then when you start hacking, then you put all your brain together and start thinking, okay, how do I start thinking, okay, how do efficient and creative way? So on that note, I want everyone to think about how can they do this in their business? And what are the, you know, what are the things that you can start doing today? One of the things you could do today is really start thinking about sustainable strategy. So, you know, you could do today strategy that takes our environment into account. And if you start thinking of how we did strategy before and how do we plan in the year in advance and that's how we do it, think about how can you change your frameworks on decision making to include your planet and actually make it sustainable 
for you too. So you can actually be adaptive and be agile throughout everything, that, all decisions that you make in your company. So that's what we call sustainable strategy. And the other side, it's sustainable technology. So what I kind of mentioned last time about sustainable architecture, that is core. It's like build an architecture that is scalable and flexible and that can sustain your company over time meaning that you can adapt to different technologies, you can be moldable, that it could be flexible enough that you can plug in and plug out things as you could growing as a company. So sustainability also works in your mind as something that will last, something that you know that you can create and you can create on top of. And it is becoming more and more relevant that we disclose as companies the numbers of what we call sustainable finance or, or climate finance. And that again, going back to the topics and terms that we should start get familiar with, uh, talking about climate finance not only is fascinating, but it's something that really brings about um, a whole new sphere of uh, uh, skills and views in respect to business. So Climate finance is basically trying to understand all the risks and opportunities, because there are risks and opportunities that this climate change is bringing about. So uh, we need to understand how our, our value chains or supply chain can actually be disrupted by extreme weather events. We need to understand how we can be build resilient supply chains or value chain in respect to those extreme events. If anybody wants, in our website, there is rapidly self-assessing exercise for companies where you can actually, companies and organizations, where you can actually answer six questions like, can your organization measure and track environment, environmental footprints or does your sustainability report link to your financial metrics? It's six very simple questions that can actually make you reflect or think of where your company or organization is today in respect to sustainability. And maybe once you've taken that very, very straightforward exercise, the call to action would be reflect on it and say where you want to take it. Take it step by step. And like it could be tiny little steps towards, you know, an idea or to make a little bit your company more sustainable or more green. Um, I think it, it there could be a potential there to just gain so much from just one simple step. Um, so I would definitely you know, first go to the website, try to see where you are and just turn, you know, maybe ask us around or, or just like go to Google and start Googling things <laughs> um, about, about the topic and, and get more into it because it's so, so interesting. There's so much more to see. Speaking of which, we tend to associate pollution and carbon footprint with heavy manufacturing industries, but we read in the news that tech companies can also cause pollution. How are the two related? Every action we take has an associated carbon budget to it. Almost everything, 99.9% .9 of actions would have a carbon budget associated. And of course, depending on what sort of action is, if it's walking in respect to driving a car, one will have a way smaller carbon budget associated to it. So there are differences in industries. There is an IT industry that definitely has a, a carbon footprint but that carbon footprint is nothing if we compare it to what metal industry, oil and gas industry, mining industry can actually produce. At the same time, we need to also take a look at how many people are actually using that industry. So in the case of IT, we know that even if loading up a file, we'll have a certain energy consumption that will automatically be related to a certain carbon footprint. Uh, that despite the fact that it may be very small, it's actually done repeatedly throughout the day by millions and millions and millions of people. So of course, the demography of that dimension is very important as a multiplier to understand the impact that it definitely has on the planet. So this is basically to say that yes, as a tech company, we do have our footprint. And of course, as Globant, we not only calculate it, we calculate scope one, two, and three, but we reduce it and we have very good numbers of reduction between one year and the other. Uh, but at the same time, not only that internally, what we are trying to do through technology is measuring uh, what we were talking about before, which is green IT, measuring the energy KPIs associated to 
our own internal processes of artificial intelligence, neural network, algorithms, uh, applications, uh, softwares, etc. So, you know, when, when we talk about how can we even make that better, there's so much time. We don't even talk about uh, our footprint and in terms of carbon footprint and energy consumption, but we also think about our time and effort and money and dollars of very important people in your company just being in useless meetings. There's frameworks to actually reduce that. There's methodologies that we could use to actually reduce that consumption of time and money and effort and energy. So we use things like design thinking. You know, in design thinking, we have workshops as, you know, as part of a tool set. So then we can prepare ourselves better to everyone being in one room and making decisions together. And that will probably replace a thousand emails or a thousand, you know, Zoom calls. Instead, we have one that we can produce so many more insights and actually start making decisions and proactively start doing things right away instead of consuming all that energy and time. And so, you know, it's funny how everything connects, but at the end is how do we actually become as people and as organization more efficient and greener? And how do we do time decision making sustainable? We've learned that the impact of tech industries can be reduced if companies start thinking about a sustainable strategy. We can hack the system. It takes effort, but as we heard all through this episode, there are plenty of ideas that can be applied, and they all need us to think of planet Earth as a stakeholder. Maybe the most important one. Thank you for listening to season one of Unscripted Tech a Globant original podcast where we reflect on developments that will shape our future. To learn more about how we seek reinvention, go to Globant.com and follow our show on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time.